Hey, what's going on, guys? I have with me here the real Doom guy over on Twitter. Go give him a follow. I'll post his information underneath the video so you can go and check him out. He's also got a channel that you can check out as well, Millionaire Traders. I think focuses mostly on memes. Do I have that right? Yeah, that's correct. Every so often, uh, I will do educational stuff or even talk about ThorChain because that's kind of how I found you. Right on. Yeah, that's definitely my uh, my favorite project. Are you, I mean, have you seen that they have this burn now? Yeah, I'm actually pretty excited. Let's see how that yeah. actually, you know, reflects the price. Yeah, I know, right? This burn, I know a lot of the community right now is the the price has been kind of kind of like flat you know what i mean if not if not sort of i mean it's on an upper trajectory i'm not a big chart guy but a lot of people are getting antsy about the price i think it's because historically you had a bit of like a deterministic value kind of thing where the node operators when bitcoin's price goes up they had to buy more so it would naturally push the price up of rune and with rune or with bitcoin just pumping right we're probably going to hit you think we're going to get to 100k today i don't know about today but it's definitely programmed we'll get there eventually yeah i i'm wondering a lot of people now some people are saying once it hits 100k it's going to go into liftoff mode and some people think it's going to have a significant pullback and if it does there could be some good buying opportunities i think but with this room price it usually goes up significantly when bitcoin goes up but it's not just because of streaming swaps and some other things so I was thinking the burn would help more immediately, but it looks like it's not. So we'll just have to we'll have to see what happens. It's all going to depend on volume, really. Yeah, it's going to take but, a minute, but I I know people do forget that this was actually left as a dead chain, or people thought it was dead. You really? Know, when it when it crashed from twenty dollars all the way down to under a almost a dollar under a dollar. Yeah, it was like eighty cents. Yeah. So a lot of people forget that. Even with the price now, if you bought the lows, you're still up about 5x. Yeah, totally true. I, even better than that if you got like the low, low, low. Like we had so we had a good time to do that too when it was accumulating. Oh man, I hope I hope you got some. You don't gotta share if you did or not, obviously. But yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, this was all speculation here, mostly. And then, you know, you had the I think this was just market peak. Yep, November 2021. Then this was Luna hype, and then Luna crashed. That sent us through here, and now it's doing pretty well. But we'll have to see. The fundamentals have never been better. You're familiar with Rujira? You know, to be honest, not really until recently. I bought a little bit of Kuji, which is what it is nice. now, until it's actually something else and turns into Ruji. But yeah, I mean, that's going to be happening soon. It's going to be like a. Uh, if you aren't, if you aren't, I, I don't fully understand it. They kind of talk about it like it'll be a layer two, but I know it's still just built into the base layer. And um, yeah, you'll be able to do Bitcoin loans, uh, basically all the different L1 assets in there. It should be pretty interesting. Perps, lending, probably savers, uh, all those kind of things. So it should be pretty exciting because I'm hoping it generates a lot of volume which drives the APRs up in the pools, which makes people want to add to the pools, which hopefully will cause some sort of, you know, demand on the price, but we'll have to see. Yeah. And, you know, since, since it's a guy you actually follow too, coach Bruce, I know he talks yeah. about it a lot. Mm -hmm. They just need to dumb it down a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, familiar cow, he's got this awesome dashboard. It gets better every single day. Like he just added this kind of like this countdown thing here. And then it used to not update the max supply and some of these others every single time it ticked. And this is just really, really fun to watch. So to me, this is like I, I said in a video just recently, if I had some of those Google glasses, I would put the burn <laughs> like dashboard just up here so I could just like glance at it all day long. It's just kind of fun for me. But yeah. um, and, you know, yeah. the lower the price, the more we can burn. So that's yeah, that's, that's exciting. That's actually a really great point. The price drops, more burn goes up, more scarce. Hey, right. Um, so let's get in, I guess. Yeah, let's get into some, let's get into some memes. I think you had, um, I, I seen you repost this on your Twitter a couple times. What do you like about, what do you like about this one? So baby tiger, basically I found it through Logan, uh, Logan Shippy. Yep. And I actually got into the pre-sale and nice. 
if you just want to put it in simple terms, this is just a leverage bet on Ethereum. If okay. you think Ethereum is going to do well, this was this is going to do well. Is there is there like a mechanism for that? Like, what's the reason? Yeah. So basically, um, when it launched, all the um, all the funds that were received were put into a lending protocol in Aave. So basically, anytime ETH goes up. It actually takes out a loan, from what I understand, from the treasury and buys back BBT. So it's basically forced by, forced by pressure into okay. BBT. So you can have zero new holders, and this is still going to run. Is it so? Is it kind of like would you could we describe that as like self looping in a way? Yes. Okay. So the key here would be that if you just wouldn't want to be there, you. Because if it goes up hard on an ETH increase, then it's probably going to also come down. So you need to time that pretty well, I'm guessing, right? Well, so, I mean, if you actually go on, if, if, you, if you can look at it on Dextools, and if you put it maybe on the daily, so you can see the first top. And if you actually correlate that to the price of Ethereum, mm -hmm. when it launched, I think Ethereum was around 3,200. It was pumping. And then there was a okay. big dump correlated as well with the price of Ethereum. And obviously, people just, you know, taking profits. I mean, it ate that, and it seems like it's recovering now. Like, what's causing, I, I guess, maybe just the ETH pump is what's getting it. Like, I wonder if this is holders or if this is just be, uh, a byproduct of ETH going up completely almost. No, I believe ETH has to be at least, I think. So there's a level. So from the time it launched, I think ETH was about 3300 or 3350 something like that. So the price needs to get to that level for the treasury to be back in profit and be able to buy back BBT. I think for every 1% that ETH goes up past that level, there's about a $12,000 buy pressure that happens every time from the treasury. Are you thinking that, uh, I mean, this is just kind of off, off topic of this particularly, but it definitely does relate. I know there's a lot of Ethereum FUD lately. Uh, I know none of this is financial advice or anything like that, but are you a, would you consider yourself an ETH bull or more in line with the Solana or something else is going to take over ETH at some point? So to be honest, I used to be an ETH bull. Mm -hmm. I think this still easily hits about 10K this cycle, but I don't know. Anytime I look at Vitalik, I, I just feel like, oh, man, this is the guy who was in charge of my money. Yeah, but don't you want an autistic – I mean, I'm, and I'm not saying this in a, a derogatory way. Don't you want like a, a genius autist kind of running the show off in time for some of these? I mean, yeah, I just wish his, you know, T levels were a little bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I think a lot of it was – uh, I, I think that the L1 scalability issue has largely been solved with uh, Radix. I'm a fan of, even though the you know Radix, I'm a fan of. I think Egold or um, multi. I I always confuse it. Not multiverse. And then I think Aptos and Sui are also scalable L1s. So I'm like, why would you? And ETH, I think in the roadmap is to try to scale the L1, but it's still going to be slower than the L1s we already have that are scalable right now. So I don't know what the point of that would be. And that's over a five-year period. So I guess I just kind of don't get it. I don't know. To be honest, everybody worries about transactions per second, who's got the fastest chain. But by market cap, does that really reflect? Uh, reflect? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just thinking about, I was talking with Beam the other day about this kind of thing. And it's like, I, I think that people might be focusing a little bit too much on the L1 asset itself maybe because i think ethereum does well because it's got a bunch of dApps that are built on top of it so that's where everyone wants to go because you've got all the action there all the liquidity there so eth is eth the actual coin has its value because of all the dApps built on top of it but if the dApps were to move onto a different layer one then the eth coin itself obviously would probably not do that well I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I'm I'm mostly bullish, which which I know it's I, I can't say it's different, but when it comes to base, you know, Ethan base. So mm -hmm. for me, really, my thesis is so ETH doesn't have Ethan base doesn't really have like a, 
a main coin that you're really betting on is just basically Ethereum for Ethereum, right? Right. Yep. It's just in a different chain. But you just want to position yourself because Coinbase has said that they want to onboard millions and millions and millions of users to base. Right. So you want to set yourself ahead of retail so you can make the real money. What do you think of like speaking of memes? Um, what do you think of you're following Bruce? It sounds like. Have you heard of this this queen? I got it over here in my watch list. Absolutely. So I just made a video. Um, I think it'll be dropping maybe tomorrow. Okay. And it's very interesting. So Bruce is an interesting character. So you never know if this is for real or if, or if it's actually going to be a rug. Right. I don't know. To him, it's like, it's all a joke. So that's, I don't that's, know. Kind of my, that, that's my thing too, is I, I, I asked the most mid curve question you could probably ask on Twitter <laughs> like yesterday, the day before someone actually even sent it to me, like in with me right there at the top kind of, and it's like, I'm asking like, is this legit? Is this going to be an AI with a million dollar wallet that's really doing stuff? Or is this just going to be some, you know, shit posting intern yeah. that's given some money? So on that same token, you remember open exchange, right? Uh, no, I don't know that one. So, you know, before it was Oxdow, before it was Coach Bruce. Yes. Uh -huh. So Ox token, it was the open exchange token. Okay. And I it's do still remember live. He still does it. So back in those days, you know, if you actually look at, if you go to his Twitter, right? Or mm -hmm. X, whatever you call it nowadays. And you actually look at his profile pic. It's a mouse, right? Yeah. So anytime that mouse shows up in any other chats for open exchange, it would be like, hey, I'm just the intern. But if you actually have one, if you actually had one working brain cell, you understood that was him behind there. It wasn't just an intern. It was him. Mm. So, I mean, he's growing. He was at like just 220,000 followers not long ago. I guess that's what it is. So is a bet on Queen sort of, I, I, and I'm going to have to watch the video after this. So maybe you've already covered that in your video, by the way, guys. Yes, go check out his channel. He already made a video on this somewhere in there. Yeah, so so it hasn't dropped yet. It's going to be there uh, today right, or tomorrow. Right. I'm waiting on the thumbnail. Is this worth kind of taking a shot on, in your opinion? So this one, to me, is a 50-50. Mm -hmm. And if you actually dig deeper, this token was has been live for a long time. If you actually go on Google and type in Do Queen on Soul, see what comes out. Do Queen on Soul. Let's see what we got here. Coin market cap, doqueen.com? Yeah, try that. Let me just make sure it's family friendly. <laughs> uh, it's probably not necessarily family friendly, but yeah, no, I'm not going to pull this up necessarily. So you, so you can look at it uh -huh. and you can look at the contract address is the same contract address. So basically this was live and it was rebranded to the AI. So the idea has been around. It's actually a funny, you know, idea. We'll have to see. I, I, I like coach Bruce's question. Like how, how's he going to explain this to Del Quan when he gets out? That yeah, I mean, to be honest, I follow the guy because I think he's funny as hell. If if you get his humor, he's yeah. funny as hell. Yeah, I agree with you. Usually my strategy with him is, you know, just buy whatever he's shilling for a couple of weeks and then sell it <laughs> okay. before the inevitable dump. Because I have a I feeling, mean, I have a feeling, right, you know, because he has that website, right, flipluna.com. And once they get to that market cap for Luna or even slightly higher, I think it's going to rug. Yeah. I just have that feeling. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I thought this was, I was surprised. I was, uh, you know, I did the tip. I'm doing right now the typical, oh man, I wish I could buy this cheaper. And then it became cheaper and I'm still on the fence <laughs> and then it's going to run. And then I'm going to be like, dang, I wish I bought, should I buy it higher? I'm like that exact person. I swear to God, total mid curve. <laughs> but yeah, I was wondering about it. You know, I don't know people taking profit because he shared on Twitter a couple times, like, screenshots about people requesting to fund a wallet with a million and a half dollars. And I'm always like, yeah, but it's Bruce's account. Is it, how much of it is sarcasm? How much of it's real? He's play, is he playing in the shade of gray between AI and reality? I don't know. I don't know what to make of this one to be yeah, completely honest. And, you know, then again, I can't fault the guy because then you look at GOAT, right? A token like GOAT yeah. basically ran. It's it's about a dollar now. I spoke on my channel about it. Whenever... With you? you what? Was he behind that one too? Oh no, I don't oh, think okay. so. 
Yeah, that was just a, it's a sentient a, sentient AI, right? But then again, was it really, or was it just a guy behind a you know? Yeah, just I think with everyone, Chad GPT. Yeah, I think that's what everyone expects that it is, and I think that's probably what Do Queen. But who cares, right? It's all just whatever you decide it might be. It's all just a meme in the end. In the end, you got yeah. any? Uh, you got any other memes that you might be looking at? So yeah, but they're not they're not family friendly. Okay, that's fair. When you're you're in crypto, and I know that we're we're talking about some memes right now, but are you in crypto for the memes, or are you in here for more of the principled reasons of like potential bank collapses, trying to exit the system, or you know some more some more principled things? Like what is what is your reason for being in crypto? So I'm in crypto because I like the freedom of it. I mean, I was I, I really came into crypto during the last bull run. I was the guy who bought in the hype of, you know, Matt Damon showing up on uh, commercials. Crypto.com. Fortune favors the brave. So I was the guy who wanted free Netflix and spent, <laughs> you know, four grand on the card just to see that four grand go under like a thousand dollars. Anchor got me. Oh, Anchor Protocol. Anchor was the one that destroyed me. Yeah. I thought I was doing the safe thing, right? UST, put it in Anchor. I'm in stable coins. Like nothing's going to, you know, stable coins are stable. I didn't know anything. I still, it took me until probably like three or four months after it collapsed to even learn what a wrapped asset was. There was a UST. That was the whole point of the thing. Yeah. And then that's when I started getting into research. But okay. So you got in around the same time as I got in. It sounds like at the top of the last bull, bull market. So yeah. what are you looking for? What are you mostly looking for now? So to be honest, it, I mean, we we can see that memes have really outperformed absolutely everything. Even yeah. the OGs like Pepe, that, you know, people would think, oh, no, you know, it's not going to run anything. You can also see Doge has sucked up a lot of the liquidity in the market. And I wouldn't be surprised if they actually flip XRP. <laughs> that will especially Doge, right? Because of the, yeah. the Elon Vivek. Right, we're gonna have a government, uh, a consulting department or whatever, uh, literally called Doge, and that's even how they pronounce it too. So, yeah, maybe. I mean, XRP is. I still don't entirely know. I've never done a deep dive on it. Is there anything there with XRP, or is it mostly just you know? The, that... To be honest, for the people that have been holding for five to six years, I mean that there's always been this. You know, this narrative, oh, you know, XRP is behind all the banks and, you know, they're going to do, uh, they're going to be involved with global transfers, remittances and all this and that. Right. But it hasn't necessarily materialized yet. Even the last bull run, they, they were, they were not a part of the last bull run just because they had that lawsuits from lawsuit from the SEC. So, I mean, now that the chains are off. Then yeah, I have a feeling it might run, but it's definitely not gonna run like most people think. Like, oh, you know, you you see the videos on YouTube, you put XRP, and a lot of yeah. people say, XRP Oh, it's gonna be ten thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, just don't I, mention don't mention market cap to those guys because they'll they'll tell you they're wrong. I was gonna say it, some of those price predictions for XRP, I think I did the math just like one time, just head math, and I was like, I don't think there's enough money in the world in asset value. For that to no. even be possible. And they're like saying it like it's a real price prediction. You think they're joking, but they're not. <laughs> I no have shade a on XRP Army. No shade on XRP Army. Yeah, a, a buddy of mine, he swears by it. And he's just like, oh, just wait and see. Just wait and see. And I always tell him, I hope you have a plan B. Because he keeps saying, oh, they're going to suck up all the world's liquidity. And I just tell him, hey, just... I hope you have plan B to where XRP doesn't suck up all your liquidity. I mean, what what's the what's the idea there? Is that it's going to be a CBDC and facilitate international trades and all this kind of thing? And I'm like, if your bet, I've, I've kind of felt this way. I don't know. I'm curious your opinion. If a chain's whole value proposition is to be the network for basically a global slavery coin, then I don't want it. And do you think that, the powers that be would let you own a part of the network that has the global slavery coin on it. Probably it's kind not. Of, it's sort of my it's sort of my thought. Probably not. I mean the the latest thing they want to do is they they want to do a stable coin. I think it's called 
R USD, something like that. I, I can't remember. And that's going to be their main thing. But then again, it's just been so long and I just rather not leave free money on the table, to be honest. It's already too high market cap. If you're really trying to get probably retirement money, anything in probably the top, what would you say? Maybe like top 50 or so. If you buy, unless you already have a lot of money, what, I mean, there might be some five or 10 X's in there, but at the very top, but if you're looking to like make money to then, so I'm, I'm curious, do you, are you interested in real yield at all? Or is it mostly appreciation sort of bets that you make? So I do both. Honestly, I love yield. I do liquidity pools on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never been really involved with Thorchain when it comes to liquidity pools, just because I tried it once or twice, and it just seemed like it was kind of clunky. Yeah. I couldn't get the yield out. It seems like it was auto compounding, but anything I ever put in, just the value of the position just kept going down, 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 down every time. Yeah. So to me, I like something where I can actually pull the yield, and I know they're working on that when it comes to Thorchain, so hopefully that's hopefully that's in the works. But yeah. It's absolutely insane that somebody can come into the world of DeFi with, you know, maybe ten, twenty thousand dollars and easily make a three to five K income per month. What? Where are you finding that? <laughs> where, are you, where are you finding that? What is that like? Ten thousand so so, that'd be like a three hundred percent yield, right? So you, you you have to go outside of Thorchain. There there's many right. venues. You can do it on Sui, you can do it on Solana. You can even grab some of the memes you have and actually provide liquidity for them. That's where the that's where the real money is. But I mean, that's just risky, right? Because you got to factor in potential and permanent loss on memes is the scary part of those. That's but true. If there's a stable coin, if it's like 300% or something like this, and the so, meme tank. Even know. for an asset like GOAT, right? When it first mm -hmm. came out, there was a lot of speculation. The first AI type meme, right? If you had a really wide range... And obviously, you just made a pool with basically Solana and GOAT. Even if you were to make a full range pool, right, you were still getting about 1% yield per day. And you can let that sink in. Yeah. And if it's compounding too, those kind of yields kind of make me nervous. Do you you remember Time, right? Time Wonderland and like the Ohm, all those Ohm forks? Uh, not familiar. Uh, okay. No, no worries. They There was like a um, Time Wonderland was doing this rebasing thing or something. And the APRs were like, a hundred thousand percent it was stupid before the whole thing rugged yeah so i kind of like anything over 100 short term 100 percent or like near there i'm like okay maybe short term apr bumps that high but anyone anytime i see it above that i assume they're just inflating the hell out of a coin to incentivize liquidity and that it will eventually rug is my first is my yeah. main Thought. I mean, it's it's pretty safe to say if you don't understand where the yield is coming from or is too good to be true, you're the yield. Yeah. Then again, I mean, even if you're factoring in in permanent loss, if you open a liquidity pool with about three to four thousand dollars and you're getting about three four hundred dollar yield uh, per day on a coin that's running and there's a ton yeah. of volume, you know, as long as you can pull out your principal and let the rest run. Yeah, that's the that's probably the trick. Yeah, so just make sure, which is hard to do. At least for me, that's really hard to do. So where do yeah. you run your liquidity? I don't know. Like, so in terms of are you talking about like real yield kind of situations? Yeah, because I see even... like I've been meaning to check out your course. I just haven't had a chance to. But where do, where do you yeah. go for liquidity? So right now in in a bull run, I I don't really like liquidity pool, pools. Honestly, for the most part, you can do them short term, but I'm just not a very good short term trader. So if I'm in a liquidity pool, I assume that people got in there early a lot of the time and they're getting all that inflation. And then eventually the mercenary capital is just going to rug that. And then I'm going to be left eating the impermanent loss or, or the, the rug of the coin. So right now there's nothing that, plus we're in a bull run. So all of my allocation is for things that I'm, I'm mostly searching for price appreciation. And then eventually my plan is to, when it, the market turns, either sell some and then wait for things to come back down, then buy back in for the real yield. Or just at that moment in the bull run, convert everything into real yield. For example, uh, Rujira is going to have a real yield coin built on Thorchain. And they're going to get 50% of the 
fees for that. 50% of the fees will go to Thorchain, 50% for Ruji. So you could stake Ruji and then collect some real yield at that time. Or like right now, if you've got enough to bond on a Thorchain node, you have to have like a thousand minimum rune. You can earn 10% rune yield single-sided while you're waiting for the market, but then it's not very liquid. Yeah, which is how I found you. I actually, I went to, uh, I think it was Auto Stake. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I think right now I have about ruin bonded there sweet uh, you know i put a small part of my bag there to try to get some yield i'm getting about maybe give or take about ruin every three days yeah nice well i mean if you're if you're hodling it i just put out a poll on twitter yesterday or the day before that asking are you planning to sell your rune in 2025 or 2029 basically are you selling in this cycle or next cycle is your vision for it it is about 50 50 so if you if you have like you want to keep a bag for the next cycle, then bonding I think is really good to do just because it's not very liquid. I think with auto stake, what's cool is he allows you once every what is it once a year or something like this that you can request him unbond his node so that you can unbond your rune out of there if you wanted to. Yeah, to so be either, honest, I'm not even exactly sure how the unbonding would work. Are, have you tried multi sig yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when, uh, when you bond there, there's a function that you select just called bond. And then you put in the nodes address, your address and the quantity that you want to send to their node. And then all that happens is when, if you follow the nodes, right, there's dashboards where you can see which nodes are in standby, that kind of thing. If your node falls out of the validator set for a minimum three days, right, is the usual, uh, churn then all you would do is you would go into the wallet and you would use the unbond function. And then I'm assuming I haven't done that or anything, but there's th that option. And then you just put in the same information and then you would just remove your bond. So it has uh, to be outside of the active set for you to be able to unbond. Yeah, exactly. If you want, yep. The validator has to drop out, be churned out, and then you can unbond. But with auto stake in particular, um, I've talked to him about this. I think once a year, if you're bonded to him, then he'll if you signal, hey, I want to get out of here, he will voluntarily unchurn so his bond will fall out of the set and then allow you to unbond, but you're only allowed to do that once every like so so long. And then you know, next churn he turns back in and and all is good. So oh, he does cool. that, but most most node operators do not allow that. So they just they tell you the the node will churn out eventually. The oldest nerd nerd. The oldest node churns out eventually at one point. So there's going to be an opportunity. It's just a matter of, that's what I mean. It's not it's not necessarily liquid when you bond. You yeah. sometimes don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm here for the long term because I want to see what they do. So it's Same. so it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm going to need the funds in three days or something like that. Right. And I, I think, um, especially if you're interested in real yield, like the long term strategy, that's, the, and I guess that's what I mean is it's hard to find real yield that you can you can never really just set it and forget it ever. I learned that with uh with the whole Terra Luna collab sort of thing. But I do hope to find real yield that you can somewhat count on. I don't want to have to trade yield from liquidity pools that I'm I'm going to lose sleep at night with the assets potentially rugging, like one of them rugging, you know what I mean? Yeah. So real yield when it comes to rune, you know, some of these, I'm hoping to buy them now. I'm hoping they run up and then I can just hold them and that we get some real yield opportunities out of that stuff. But specifically, which ones I'm not entirely, I'm not entirely sure. But so when it comes to these memes, we've got queen here. But so how do you, how do you find the memes that are going to win? Like in your opinion? So half of my thesis here is what Mira had said, right? You need to mm -hmm. find communities that are staying, that have mimetic value, as you know, Coach Bruce actually says, and that are not just a simple copy. That it's not just another cat, it's mm. not just another freaking uh, dog or, or someone's mascot or another Pepe. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of those Pepe's. Um, so you need to find something that stands out and that people are going to be behind. There's okay. not a there's not a ton of insiders. There's not venture capitalist that you're just going to be actually liquidity for them i'm going to show you one for example that has real staying power and that i still believe it can run 
Okay. Should be, okay. Should be friendly. <laughs> okay. I mean, unique for sure, and it uh, it's very true. I think for the most part. So this made it to two hundred and. Can I ask you where where two hundred seventy two million dollar market cap is? Do you have sort of a threshold where if a meme has gone past a certain market cap, you just don't look at it anymore? Yeah, for me, if it's past about. 300 million market cap is, 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 is too far gone. 300 million. Some of so the exceptions, you... some of the exceptions can be something like Brett. Okay. But usually once they get to a billion, I mean, your best case scenario is going to be a 10, maybe 15 X if you're lucky. Yeah. I mean, I don't expect many to reach 1 billion even like 272. I don't know where this one's going to go. I mean, so this is my problem and this is probably why I'm going to stay poor is usually if the market cap on a meme is above, you know, five to 10 million, I'm usually like, oh, I, I missed it. You know, I usually don't expect memes to go past 30 million and maybe that's my problem. So if you just hold this, right, and it's still just going up, this looks like the Caspa chart almost. <laughs> yeah, and, and to be honest, I'll be the first to one call it here on, on this video. This is going to go to a dollar. There's Ooh. not a there's there's not a single doubt in my mind. Okay. Not a single doubt. And I wouldn't even be surprised if we get to two dollars on this one, just because I mean maybe not on camera, but you can go later on and, and look at their Twitter, <laughs> look at their okay. actual website. And it's just something anything any think about this. Any sentence you can make about this token is memeable. Let me That's give you an crazy. example. Hey. Uh, I looked at my tits this morning and it was doing great. Yeah. Well, I mean, that kind of reminds me of this one I track over here. This is a Coach Bruce one too, I think. Right? It was the uh, the Thor chain meme, the wee wee. There's a lot oh, of memes yeah. similar with with the body parts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, okay, so heard it here first. Don't worry if it doesn't happen. No one's holding you to it or nothing like that. We well, know it, that this it's, meme. It's, it's going to happen. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm, I'll track this one for sure. I'm it's going it. to happen. I'm store it so, right now. Yeah, to, so really, I mean, let this let this be your first win. Take a small chance. This is going to 4X for sure. <laughs> okay. I might. But, I might throw it on. It's on Solana too, so it's it's not like it's expensive like yeah. in terms of gas. And okay. then you can, be a, you can be a part of it. Okay. Well, cool. Um, yeah, we've been going for about like 30 minutes or so. This has been fun. Uh, it was nice to meet you. And by the way, anyone watching this video, right? Go give them a follow over on Twitter. It's been a fun chat. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, man, my pleasure.